if you look at the, um, and I was just talking with Scott, one of our students here, uh, he was saying the longer it is, the easier it is to turn it. And the reason for that is, is because if, and I'm gonna let you see this on me because you couldn't see it on you, even though the people at home could, is that if you look at what you have to turn, which is my shoulder to shoulder, and then compare it to the radius from here to there, it's the same distance. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. But that right there, from there to my spine, is greater than the distance. Is greater than the distance of the size of my back. Okay. Which means if you're fighting a guy that weighs 800 pounds, you might have some problems because you're never going to be able to spin him because the radius of the axis is so large yeah. versus yeah. what you can get out of the human arm. You might have short arms and a long. And back. a long, yep, and a very wide back, and then it's not going to work. But seeing that before it ever happens, you know, I can't do it to that guy. He's got a gigantic body and little bitty arms. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work. So that's when you have to look at this. But the resistance has to be divided by the actual force I have to use to do it. So go ahead and come down. Okay. Re resist. I have to overcome this resistance. Go ahead and do it. In order to move it, I have to overcome your body and all your strength in order to do it. But out there, once it gets out there, then the actual force I have to use, because of mechanics, the longer the lever, arm of the lever, it's less. it's less. So then your resistance starts to mean nothing. Problem is that people can still resist it. Mm -hmm. And so now we're going to go through a couple of things where they can't resist it. So let's first off look where you grab with this, and we're just, we'll move right into it. Now we know what the wheel and axle is, we know what AMA is, we know what IMA is. We know how they work, we know how to look at somebody when they're diving against us. So now we're going to look at a couple of instances of how we can do this. Right here, you get into this situation where you've got this body and it's moving like we just did. One of the problems that you have is, is that you have to actually do something with that force that's coming through. So, go ahead and over again in the position. Alright, put your arms out and then grab, try to, okay. If you're right there, if I'm just trying to turn him this way, I'm turning him based on where his feet are and I'm turning him on that axis. So I'm basically turning against all of his resistance because he can resist me fully here. So if I'm turning this here like this, then I'm moving him around the axis and he has his plant heated, or his feet planted, he's not going to move. So what I have to do is, is I have to turn it like this and create a screw out of it. Okay? So in order to accomplish that work, we know from the screw that we have a wedge, and then the wedge has those rivets, we're going to change it like this, and then we're going to move it like that, instead of like this. So, put your arms up, all the way. Once we're here, instead of pushing up this way, I'm going to push the head back, and so the back kind of does this, and I'm going to move the arm forward. You all right? Mm -hmm. Basically what I've done is, is that instead of this rotation right there, I've changed it there. And so the center mass starts to move in this direction outside of there, instead of just rotating in the load bearing area. Does that make sense? So, come right now. You're gonna pull this forward, push that down, and then rotate. The further you get this out, the further it's going to work. There, way out. You can't stand up through it, okay? Now, what does that do for the person that's there. It's the same thing. Push that down, pull this diagonally, and create a screw. All right? When you're working with somebody and they come in on you, or you see the things where the person, like, you know, I'm trying to think of how people do this because I never do this with a strike, but I've seen it done, which is, um, Greg, just, grab down, grab here. A lot of times what happens is they get them here and then they start wrestling with it. Once you're wrestling with this point, you've lost. 
you've got to push that down and you can see I've already shifted the angle and then pull this going back that way. The most efficient way to do this is to get this moving with your own body because just doing that is not realistic. We're going to be moving because we're in a combative situation. So what I want to do is, is I want to duck here. I want to lift when I grab this up. A little bit different. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use my body in order to accomplish this. Come on down. Now I'm going to grab this. I want you to give me some. Um, you can fold. You can fold your. Arm. I want you to give me a little bit of resistance. Okay. 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 I can't move him right now. Watch this. The reason that that works is is because I get it moving in one direction here, and then I bring it back up and over. So I'm constantly shifting this. I'm driving this down this way, so it starts to go that way while I'm coming back up. So I'm forcing that center mass out. Do not think of this in terms of balance. Do not think of this of anything else. If you think of it as a technique, you'll pay no attention to the feet and the center mass. Lean over. The, the center mass right now is inside the low bearing area. It's probably about Stand up. Let me do it this way. Put your arms up. Okay, bend down. So center mass is probably sitting right here. If you try to move him out, all you're going to do is, is move the center mass this way because all you're doing is, is turning. Just turn this way. All you're doing, you can tell he's not moving. You're fighting this for no reason. You've got to get the center mass moving out while you do it. Once it's moving this way, that's when you start to turn it and you get it moving in that direction. Then you turn around it. So think in terms of center mass. Do not think in terms of technique. You're good. You look like you're in the stockade. Um, so now that we've looked at that, I want to show you some other examples of using this type of principle and technology in order to accomplish some work. So, we're just going to keep rolling because we're on a roll. Let's look at arm structure. Pretty easy. Arm structure is the same thing. I got my guy. He's got his shoulders here. He got his arm. One down. Like this. He's got his hand. I got that line. Wherever you see the hand move, you've got the same thing as long as there's a crook in the arm. You've got a wheel and axle. So let's take a look at it. If you're here, just relax. There, you got that right there. You got that line. You got this. You got that crank. And it's moving. You're good? Mm -hmm. Up and around it. Notice the difference between holding it here and rotating it around, come back, and holding it there and rotating the whole thing it creates a completely different movement. It's something that you need to study with your training partner and make sure you understand because it feels different. Mm -hmm. It's a very different feeling for me to fix this point and basically do what I just did, which is I'm going to hold here and then I'm going to rotate that around versus grabbing it and moving all of it at one time. Resist this. There you go. Resist this. Very different. It's the same principle. Okay? So when you look at grabs, let's say he grabs here. It's the same thing. You... The axis right here, and this is one of the things that people think they can pull this off and they never can and they can't figure out why when the person actually re resists them is because I have to move this around right here. So let's take a look at moving around this point with this, we'll create a line right here, we'll look at that and we're going to come back to the resistance that happens in moving around a grab so you can better see why some things work and why some things don't.